Praise the Lord. Good morning, Church of New Destiny worldwide. We bless you. We praise the Lord for your lives. And we thank God that you come time and time again to listen to the word of Almighty God. It's not me speaking. It's Jesus that is actually speaking through you because that through me, because that is the prayer that I always pray that Lord Jesus speak through me. So I can't tell you that I'm a good preacher. But I can tell you that Jesus is a good speaker, a good preacher, a good Lord. And come and taste that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He has shown us mercy. It's through his mercy and his grace that we're able to say the things that we say and speak the things that we speak. So I'm continuing on this series, you know, and the Lord dropped it in my spirit again this morning. Isn't it wonderful, this God that we serve? He always drops things in our spirits. You know, he downloads on us. And he said to me, call it the digging deep series we're digging deep digging deep series that's what we're in right now and we're in that chapter of talking about uh demonic attacks praise the lord hallelujah so uh you know we were talking last week about going beyond believing into action we're going beyond believing into action. We were talking about moving the power and using the power. Move the power of God into action, all right? And use it. Praise the Lord. You know, so um, we're just continuing on. We mentioned about wearing the badge of Christ's authority, yeah? Because we're made in his image and his likeness. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, and the summary of that is that uh, we should be aware of the many ways that Satan works. We have to not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. That's what the Bible says, not to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. So sometimes, you know, we're going through so much and we're asking questions. Why is it only me? Why am I under attack? Why am I going through this? You know, why is this thing not happening the way it should happen? It's because he's attacking you. He's attacking you. He's attacking your circumstances. The enemy doesn't want you happy. He wants you depressed. The enemy doesn't want you to smile. He wants you to look miserable. The enemy doesn't want you to smile sleep he wants you to have insomnia the devil doesn't want you to 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 have anything that is to do with anything positive with your well-being he wants people depressed and under mental health attacks so the bible says no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper that means that the enemy fashions weapons against us so but the bible says that it shall not prosper no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you and I are living in the most intense, intense time in this human history. This is where we're living now. We're living in the most intense time. And that's why you're feeling the pressure. I'm feeling the pressure. The whole world is feeling pressure. Why? Because the Satan is working over time on everywhere. Is working over time on the family, is working over time on the children, is working over time in the workplace, is working over time on your business, he's working over time on your brothers, your sisters, your marriage. The enemy is working over time, but God wants us to walk in the anointing that He has already given us. You've got the power, you've got the authority. He wants us to begin to walk in that. So we got into the section where we're saying, you know, we must move into action. So I don't believe in these last days that any lazy christian will make it sorry i'm sorry to say it like that if we're lazy to read our bible if we're lazy to take action it's either you're subjected to those demons continually tormenting you or you're free and walking in freedom and our choice is to walk in freedom in jesus mighty name and so we must take authority jesus has given us authority over the enemy but we must identify who are we taking authority over what is this authority? Who are we taking authority over? So we're saying that last week I was talking about, you know, demonic attacks. Who are these demons that are attacking us? Who are they? Where are they from? So I want us to go to Revelations chapter 12. Thank you, Lord. Revelations 12 verses 7 to 9. So I'm titling this series, the Digging Deep series. And the Lord will give me the rest of the title. You'll see it when it comes out. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Revelations 12, 7 to 9 says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. Listen, I want to stop a little bit there. Okay. Michael is a 
chief angel. All right? And he's got angels also around him, which tells me that there's a hierarchy here. There's a hierarchy that God uses even among the angels. So he could send just one angel to go and deliver a message and a principality from the realm of the enemy can attack that angel, all right? So I want you to recognize Michael as, a, as an archangel, okay? Archangel, a protector of God's people. That is who the angel Michael is, all right? So he and his angels fought with the dragon. The dragon represents Satan and the dragon and his angels fought. The angels of that dragon are demon spirits. They are demons, all right? They do exist, but the enemy don't want the world to know that. For as long as you are ignorant, that you're not fighting against flesh and blood, but principalities and all these powers and all these demons, you'll be blaming somebody, you blame yourself, you blame your sister, you blame your brother, but you will not see these demons. So God is exposing them in these last days. And we're seeing them manifesting around us every day. All right, so God himself is coming against them. So what happened in this situation where this war broke out between two factions of angels? I want you to understand that angel Michael is from heaven, and the dragon and his angels, they're from the pits of hell. They're from the kingdom of hell. So there are two kingdoms warring against each other. One kingdom from hell and the other kingdom from heaven. But they did th these angels, these angels fought. The dragon and his angels fought, verse 8. But they did not prevail. All right, so the dragon and his angels fought back. But the dragon was not strong enough. So the Bible says they did not prevail. They lost their place in heaven. So, uh, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So these demonic angels used to live in heaven. They used to be inhabitants of heaven before the presence of God. But unfortunately, because of their bad behavior, their evil, the Lord cast them out of heaven. So they lost their, their place in heaven. They lost their place in heaven. Let's go to verse 9. The Bible says a place was not found for them in heaven any longer. That was verse 8, verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old. All right. The great dragon represents Satan. That serpent of old was, if you look in, uh, 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 is an ancient serpent. When you look in Genesis 3.1, we're not going to go there. When you look in uh, Genesis 3.1, you will see uh, that what it refers, refers to. That serpent, that ancient serpent is the devil, is Satan. He's the one that tricks and deceives. He's the one that leads astray. He's the one that leads the whole world astray and tells lies. He will tell a lie about you, tell you a lie about your health, your well-being, your family, the promises of God. Satan is a liar and the father of lies. And so the Bible says in verse nine, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old. Listen, I want you to mark that word cast out, write it down in capital letters, was cast out of heaven. God did something. He did and he took an action word because the enemy was misbehaving. These demons were misbehaving. Some angels followed him. God cast them out straight away, right? Out of heaven. This devil, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. So he's called that serpent. The enemy is a serpent, right? He's called the devil. He's called Satan. Devil, Satan, serpent. Deceiving the whole world. Remember when Adam and Eve, when he deceived Eve, that was the old serpent. That was the devil that was talking to Eve right there, deceiving her. And he was cast to earth. When they warred in heaven and they lost that battle, the devil was cast down to the earth. And his angels, his demons were cast out with him. And that's why we call the devil an angel of light. He pretends to be the truth. He pretends like he's friendly, he's nice, but he's a devil. He's a serpent. He's a deceiver. So they were hurled out. God kicked them out. And I'm... I'm pointing this word out to you so that you know that God kicked them out. He hurled them out. He cast them out. If God did that, what must you do? 
with these demons. You must cast them out of your atmosphere, of your surrounding, of your life, of your body. Wherever they want to possess, you cast them out. Wherever they're waging war against you, you cast them out. Cast out. That is a cattle letter. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 that I mentioned, the Bible says, Now the snake, serpent, was most clever. I want you to recognize that he's not a fool. Don't take the enemy for granted at all. You have to be alert. He's not a fool. He's shrewd. He's clever. He's cunning. He's crafty. Anytime you meet a crafty person, the devil is walking through them. I'm telling you right there. Witchcraft is craftiness. The devil is using them. Demons have possessed people and are using them. And so, because of that craftiness, he was the, the, the most clever of all those wild animals that the Lord God had made. And one day the snake said to the woman, who was Eve, did God really say that you must not eat fruit from any tree of the, in the garden? Do you think he said that with a demonic voice? I don't think so. He said it with a sweet voice, sweet, nice voice. There's apples on the tree ready to be eaten. But God says, don't go there, don't eat it. And then he came and he said, you see, a voice of doubt comes with questions. Is it okay to, am I, is it going to be successful? Uh, um, um, you know, you might die in that operation. You know, uh, um, does God really love you? Uh, are you really beautiful? You know, he brings a voice of doubt. I want you to recognize the craftiness of the enemy. All right. He said, did God really say? He brought a question of doubt that you mustn't eat from this fruit in the garden so that you start thinking maybe it's even, maybe I can eat it. Maybe I might die. Let me give you uh, something that I don't share often, but I, because of this message, I will share it. Okay. I believe that when my dad died, my dad was a believer, a Christian, a lovely man of God. He was the first one saved in our family. I believe that before he died, the enemy threw doubt in his heart. He was due to go for an operation for his gums, right? His lower gum, uh, because he had a, 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 an abscess or something and they needed to do like a major operation because he had been avoiding it. You know how we don't like all these things. And um, he said something. He said, I don't, I hope I don't die through this process because he was always afraid. He was always afraid of hospital. He doesn't like all those things, you know? So he made a negative confession. My brothers and my sisters, I'm sounding a word of warning. The enemy picks your words. Okay. Don't speak idle words at all. Your words will judge you. Don't speak idly. He might have just said it, not even thinking, but the enemy took it. He died on the dentist table. It's not a good thing. I don't say it too often, but because of the message, it comes out from time to time. It's not a play, it's not a, it's not a nice thing at all. But could it be because of the words he spoke? Could it be that the enemy took those words and said, look, he said that he might die there. I have a right. I don't know. But thank God he's in glory anyway. He made it to heaven. So the devil is defeated and death wears your sting. But what I'm trying to bring out here is not the fact of his death. I'm not trying to bring that out. May his beloved soul continue to rest in peace. But what I'm trying to bring out is don't say negative things about yourself. Oh, this leg has been, perhaps cancer might come out of it. You are afraid. You need to cast out the spirit of fear right there. You need to cast out that doubt right there. Arrest it. Cast it out like God hurled them out of heaven, hurled them out of your space, hurled them out of the space of your heart. Cast them out. Cast them out. Oh, maybe we're going to, maybe this, maybe that. Some doubt just comes in. And listen, what comes through believing that is that we evoke a curse. What happened with Eve in, in Genesis 3, 14 to 15, the Lord God said to the snake, God spoke to, to the devil first, to the serpent, because you have done this, you see, God is about to punish Satan now. Because you have done this, a curse will be put on you. So God put a curse on the enemy right there because of what he did. He said you will be cursed as no other animal, no other livestock or wild of the field will ever be. 
You will crawl on your stomach and you will eat dust all the days of your life. You will crawl on your stomach. So he's like that snake out there. We're not, we're not talking about a physical snake. This is a spiritual serpent. Recognize the devil is a serpent. Okay. Demons are serpents. And he says, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. God gave me a revelation of that dust all the days. Dust is flesh. Flesh, when we die, what do we become? Dust. Where did we come from? Dust. So we say ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So the devil eats dust. He loves to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He has no other thing. And the, then the Lord spoke again in verse 15. I will make you the woman enemies to each other. Right? Your descendants and her descendants will be enemies. The enemy has descendants, demons. He is the father of demons, father of lies. Your descendants and her descendants will be enemies. What is that saying? My brother and my sister, you are a descendant of Abraham. You are an enemy to the devil. The devil is an enemy to you, to your family. He hates you when you pray. And that's why they try as much as possible to distract you from prayer. They hate it when you speak to God and fellowship with him. So they try as much as possible to stop you from prayer. They hate it when you fast. So they fight against you. The enemy fights against your fasting, praying. He's strategic. This is the work of demons. But the Lord then put something in there. He said, one of her descendants, one of the descendants of the woman, who is Jesus Christ, will crush your head. Jesus Christ has crushed the head of Satan. You need to crush the head of Satan. Crush it in your marriage. Crush it in your children's lives. Crush it in your family. Crush the head of Satan in your job. Crush it. Crush it. These demons don't give up. Let's go to Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 to 14. Very quickly, I'm going to read it in Daniel. Daniel had been fasting and praying and waiting on the Lord. And then an angel came to him in verse 12. The angel said unto Daniel, fear not, Daniel. From the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, I'm reading from the King James now, thy words were heard, and I have come for thy words. Okay? So what this angel is saying to Daniel is, you've been waiting, like some of you have been doing, fasting, waiting on the Lord for something, waiting to hear from him waiting for direction from him, waiting for guidance from him. But there is a spirit, a demonic spirit that Satan assigned against that job, that assignment from God. As God is giving you an assignment, the devil is assigning demons against it. As God is telling you, pray for your family, the devil is making, causing chaos in the family so that you will not be able to pray, so that you will be unforgiving, so that you will be in bitterness, so that you will be angry, so that you will fight. That's the ultimate. So when God gives you an assignment, you've got to take that assignment back to Jesus and plead the blood of Jesus over that assignment. Plead the blood of Jesus. Bind demonic activities. So the angel spoke to Daniel and said, don't be afraid. From the first day that you set your heart, to understand and to chasten, to humble yourself. That's what it means. When you give your heart and mind to get understanding from God, to hear from God, to humble yourself before God, the, the, the Bible is saying that God has listened to you. God listens when you speak. Your words have been heard. I love that. I had to stop there says, I have come for your words. Listen, what words are you speaking that will draw angels into your situation? 
That's what you need to know. Lord, let me get the Bible. Give me a word in the Bible regarding my situation. When you begin to speak that word, that word will draw angelic activity, will draw heaven down onto earth, will draw the power of God into your situation. Your words have been heard. And he says, I have come because of your prayers, your words. Now, he has come because of that. But there is a but there. There was a delay. Sometimes you're praying and there is a delay. It's a demon that is causing that delay. Not all times, but most times demons cause delay. God can tell you to be patient and hold and be still. And God can release an answer to you and the enemy interrupts that answer and tries to delay that answer. So he says, I've come because of your prayers. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, you see, the king of the kingdom of Persia, where Daniel was, was where Cyrus, the king of Persia, was ruling. Right? So now, this prince of the kingdom of Persia is a demonic foe. It's the devil. Right? The devil. a spiritual being, a presiding angel of Persia. Every country has a presiding demon, a principality, a demonic spirit over it. And we also have angels. So everywhere is structured with the enemy. The enemy is structured. Don't take him for granted. Don't think, oh, small old devil. No, he's small underneath your feet. But he has access to some power. You have access to all the power in Christ Jesus and you must use it because he's using his power against you he's using his power against your family he's sending demons your way those demons are his angels his cohorts those demons are on assignment against your home your family your body your mind they're fighting we're in a war they're your enemies and we are the enemies so you can't have an enemy and just sit down and be eating and be crunching crisps. You can't. You've got to be alert. You've got to watch. You've got to pray. We can't be eating chocolates every day and sitting in front of Netflix. It's not going to save you from that situation. All we'll do is get fatter. But we need to get into action. We need to move. We need to engage, engage in this battle and so this angel because it's the principality the angel of persia the demon the demon of persia a principality that is watching over persia this demon fought the angel that god sent this demon intercepted that angel stood against that angel for 21 days 21 days. So when you pray, demons can stand against your word, but they will not prevail. You must not give up when you pray. When you pray, you become discouraged. There's a demon of discouragement that has been assigned against you. So when you find yourself getting discouraged because you're praying and you're waiting, you bind discouragement. You bind doubt. Doubt will be sent against you. Discouragement will be sent against you. Unbelief will be sent against you. And before you know it, May you not retreat. Before you know it, you're on the verge of giving up. Oh, this child will never change. If you said that, you need to bind it right now and rebuke it. Because that child has changed from the day that you spoke the word of God over that child, over that marriage, over that home. But because the enemy told you it will never work, it broke down. If you allow the enemy to advance, you will be retreating. If you're advancing, the enemy will be retreating. It's one or the other. And then Michael was called, praise the Lord. This angel had been at war for 21 days, the angel that God sent, but could not get rid of this interception, this delay. So he called for help. 
the angel Michael, the principal angel, the archangel of God was sent to go and assist. And, and, the, and the Bible calls him uh, Michael, one of the chief princes. Michael is the chief prince, an archangel came to help me. And I remain there with the kings of Persia. This is Daniel 10, 13 now. And now I have come to make thee understand what will befall your people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. The vision is for an appointed time. So this angel now came to explain, came to help Daniel to understand what will happen to the people. Because the vision is about sometime in the future. God is speaking to somebody that I'm going to give you visions about the future. The future of your home, the future of your family, the future of your children. There's no reason why you can't hear it. You can because we all have spiritual ears. And God is saying, I'm going to be speaking these things to you. So who are these demons? These angels of Satan? Who are they? Angels of Satan are called demons. Satan is called the devil, Beelzebub, serpent. He's the head of them all. Demons are called evil spirits. I want you to recognize them. They are evil spirits. They are unclean spirits. They are familiar spirits. What is a familiar spirit? A spirit that has been around for so long, knows about your family, knows your weaknesses, knows the things you like, a familiar spirit is a spirit that is familiar with you, familiar with your surrounding, for familiar with your generations. It's still a lying spirit, but they can prophesy something that seems like truth because they know you, they know your ways, they know your home, they know that you have a brother that comes to visit you often. They know certain things. Demons are lying spirits. I want you to identify them. They're angels of Satan. Okay, so the next thing is that the devil is not God. Satan is not God. Okay? He's not God. So he cannot be in everywhere all at once. God is omnipotent, omnipresent. God is here right now. God moves through Zoom. We've seen many miracles happen, even through Zoom, online. People are getting delivered, getting saved. I've watched a lady who was delivered. She was manifesting. The spirit left her right there online hallelujah there is no limitation with god but satan is limited because he's not god god is everywhere all at once he is the almighty god but satan can't be in many places at once so he does his evil work through his agents that's why i pray against demonic agents they can come through human beings although they're demons do you understand what i mean the spirit working behind that human being is a demon so Satan cannot be everywhere all at once, but he's working through his agents, through those demons, all right? So the enemy is well-structured, okay? Very well-structured. The demons have different territories. They have different names. They have different assignments attached to those names, okay? So doubt is a name. Unbelief is a name. Worry is a name. Anxiety is a name. Depression is a name. Demons are very territorial. They're very territorial. And they attach themselves. Those names are attached. Worry, the name worry is attached to a demon. So when you find yourself always anxious, always anxious, oh, you have no rest about anything. I'm telling you, you need to cast out that demon of anxiety. You need to rebuke it and reject that demon and cast it out and tell that demon, be quiet and be cast out in Jesus' name. I reject you, you anxiety in Jesus' mighty name. Otherwise, what you'll find is that demon will begin to speak, whisper, whisper. The enemy whispered to Eve. He didn't shout at Eve. He whispered nicely to Eve. Sometimes I have to shout at the enemy. Because all those whispers, <laughs> crying will not get it away. The problem will remain after you have cried and wiped your tears. 
Getting angry will not drive it away. Getting upset will not drive it away, but taking action will drive it away. That's what God did. God could have wallowed in pity when the war broke out in heaven. He could have said, oh, look at Satan that I made so beautiful to look after me. Look at what he's doing to me right now. No, he held him out. Cast out, cast, cast, cast them out. Cast them out of your mind. Cast them out of your heart. Cast them out of your conversation. Cast doubt out, unbelief out. Lies, cast them out, bind them in Jesus' name. So they have different territories. There's, there's, there's demons around the area. So when you grow, go on your prayer walks, you plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus when you're taking your children to school. As you're driving, plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus over those areas. Because the enemy is territorial. Have you heard of the territorial army? Yeah. Well, the enemy has his own territorial army. That he was sent out into different territories to go and possess them. How do you think the British uh, uh, Empire became an empire? They took over nations. They took over territories. They sent out armies. They colonized nations. And they became a world power. They became an empire. The enemy is looking to build an empire for himself. He's looking for slaves. He's looking for you and for me to retreat. And then he will hold us as slaves. That's what Goliath said to David. After he has captured them, he will make them slaves. Some of us are slaves to anxiety. We're slaves to worry. We're slaves to everything that is negative. We break it today in Jesus' mighty name. The yoke of slavery is broken over our lives. We're no longer slaves. We're walking freedom. Let me tell you why. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. I pray that the Lord will give me some time this morning. Please be patient with me because this, this thing needs to be, to be dealt with. We need to be engaging. God is tired of Christians coming back to him, his children coming back to him. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 uh, 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 uh. Are you in the hospital? Are you a baby? It's only in the hospital we hear children crying all the time. The Lord is saying you've been discharged from the hospital. You're no longer sick because his word has set you free, has set me free. Jesus has set us free. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 18. You must wear the armor of God. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. You may not be strong in yourself. Perhaps there's a situation that is weighing on your heart. You cannot be strong. You're finding yourself in a weak place, but the Bible is telling you, be strong, not in yourself, but in the Lord. Amen. And his great, strong, mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can fight against the devil's tricks, his kings. Put on the armor of God so that you can fight. The armor is for fighting. If you don't have an armor, you will be defeated. So that you can fight the devil's tricks, his schemes. For our fight, your fight, your conflict, your struggle, whatever you're struggling with right now, it's not against the people on this earth. It's not against flesh and blood. But it is against the rulers. Listen, that is the beginning. Ruler, please write it in capital letter. Ruler, demonic hierarchies. This is what you're fighting against. The rulers and authorities, listen, and authorities. Rulers and authorities work together because a ruler works under authority, okay? These demonic foes, the enemy gives them authority to go and fight against you but God has not given them that authority. So our fight, our conflict, our struggle is not against the people on this earth, against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and authorities and the powers, the ones who rule this world's darkness. You see all those people making those policies, all those that are writing rules, all those that are saying, bad things for us to do, for our children to do, that we know is bad, is dark, is evil, and they're propagating their agenda. Those are the rulers of the darkness of this world. 
Those are those authorities. Those are those cosmic powers who are ruling this world's darkness. We're fighting against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly realms. We are fighting. Are you fighting? Are you fighting against worry? Are you fighting against evil in your family? Are you fighting? Are you cutting that veil? Are you speaking against the veil that is causing your family's eyes not to not to see the, the word of God, not to want God? The devil has veiled the children of this world. You break that veil in Jesus' name. You take authority. You take action. And so the Bible is saying, that is why we need, for this reason, put on your whole armor. Put on God's full armor. Then on the day of evil, listen, there's a day of evil that comes to all of us. You don't want to go through trials, then you're not ready to grow. I've had to grow quickly because the trials will come, whether you like it or not. Trials will come in the family, at work, in your job, business, with children, friends, everywhere, in all spheres. Trial will come. So that is the day of evil. Okay, and we're also currently in our world right now in the day of evil. Good is fighting, evil is fighting against good. Now they're calling evil good and good bad. Have you not noticed? Christians are being persecuted in the world today. What do you think that is? Those are the rulers of this world, the evil forces that are fighting against us. So then on the day of evil, which is the end time tribulation that we're in right now, you will be able to stand strong. You'll be able to keep your ground when you resist the enemy. Put on your full armor of God. Then you will be able to resist. Praise the Lord. Persecution. And when you have finished the whole fight, after you have accomplished everything, you will find yourself still standing. Keep standing. I'm telling somebody, keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Has God given you a vision and the devil is telling you it's not going to come to pass? I'm telling you it will come to pass if you keep standing, if you don't give up and you bind the voice of doubt, unbelief and say it, God told me this and it will come to pass. I'm thanking you, Father, because your word that you've spoken to me will come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Praise and worship is powerful. Powerful because you are thanking God for what you have believed to be true. You're trusting him. Amen. So it says, stand strong. After you've done everything, keep standing. Okay. Then he's saying, stand strong. Verse 14, stand strong. Be ready with a belt of truth tied around your waist and your, and your breastplate of righteousness. Your breastplate of right living is a breastplate of righteousness. That means you must live a righteous life with God. That is your that is your belt of truth. You must put that on. Shot on your feet. Wear the good news, the gospel of peace. Praise the Lord to help you to stand strong, to have firm footing, to be fully prepared. When you're going to war, look, you can't wear slippers to war. Come on. How can you be wearing these slippers to war? You're not well armored. Go to say, put on your full armor. When you're ready to fight. You position yourself. That's what God is saying. Position yourself with the right mindset, with the word of God, with your mouth open, with the confession of the word of God. David knew his God. That's why he was able to overcome Goliath. Those who know their God shall be strong and they will do mighty exploits. In Jesus' name, you will do mighty exploits. In Jesus' name. So be firm in your footing. The enemy will frustrate you until you overcome. That trial will come again and again and again until you become more than a conqueror. The Bible says, nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. We are fighters. We are warriors. How do you become more than a conqueror? Oh, you know, okay, my sister is not saved. And I want my sister saved. And the devil is telling me they're never going to be saved. And I'm saying, no, they're going to be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the word of God says, when I am saved, myself and my family are saved. You know, I use that word and my dad got saved. He got saved first. And then when I got saved, he backslid. And the word of God brought him back. The word of God. The word of God put on your full armor of God. Praise the Lord. That's why I don't pray without scripture. You can pray, 
Just speaking in tongues and praying in the understanding is good, but always have a scripture to back it up. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so he says, in addition to this, verse 16, and also in addition to this, in all circumstances, use your shield of faith with which you can stop, you can extinguish the arrows. Use your shield of faith to extinguish the arrows of the enemy. This is deep, huh? Use your shield of faith. Don't speak faithless words. Speak faith. Speak the word in faith. Use your shield of faith. So that you can extinguish all those arrows, the fiery darts of the evil one. Satan sends arrows against our minds, against our hearts. I want you to know that those arrows are demonic foes. He will send them and aim them at your heart. And then that's why we say, my heart is broken. See, how come your heart is broken? What broke it? Is it not flesh? Nothing broke your heart, but spiritually, your heart is broken. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that was assigned against your heart. And then you felt that pain and your heart is breaking, but you're looking at the wrong place. You're looking at man. Look beyond that man and take authority and extinguish that arrow. And take authority, bind that arrow in the name of Jesus. And then he says, take on the helmet of salvation. Verse 17, accept it, receive it. The helmet of salvation. And take the sword of the spirit, which is the word, the message of God. Take the message of God to the devil. Tell him it is written, which is what Jesus did. Take the sword of the spirit, the message of God. That is your helmet of salvation. Praise the Lord. It must never be removed. Thank you, Jesus. The sword of the spirit, the message of God. And then verse 18 says, pray in the spirit at all times with all kinds of prayers pray in dependence on the spirit i'm very dependent on the spirit i have to pray all the time then i'll pray my understanding lord please help me with this lord please help me with that you know but because i'm limited in understanding i shift again to the spiritual language which is between me and my father and the demons can't engage in it they don't understand it they're confused so i love to confuse them so i will just be speaking in tongues and then my father will start singing and then I go back to him. Before you know, your heart is lifted, your body is lifted, your, your, your sorrow is gone, your worries are lifted because the demons are confused and they have to leave. When you speak in tongues, demons are confused. If you don't speak in tongues, I can pray for you. You just have to open your mouth by faith and begin to speak in tongues. If you're listening to me online and you'd like to speak in tongues, will you begin to speak in tongues right now and give me that testimony? When you've listened to this message, will you send me all those lovely messages that you send me online and say, Pastor Lade, I spoke in tongues today. Open your mouth right now. So I'm doing it. There's no limitation in God. Begin to speak. That is it. That is it. And don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. The devil will tell you, oh, you're speaking gibberish. Tell him, get the hands right now. You see, you're speaking. I can leave you right there. And begin to speak just like a child that just learned to walk keep walking keep speaking keep walking keep speaking and give me that good news in jesus mighty name so the bible says pray in dependence of the spirit at all times with all kinds of prayers and requests asking everything that you need ask him everything i ask him everything that i need everything i don't leave anything out because some people say oh it's logic it's, uh, it's logic, it's common sense, it's this and that. Look, I'm not dwelling on that. I don't want to know about common sense. I don't want to know about logic. I just want to speak the word of God. I want to trust God. I want to speak to God. I want God to take charge because I can't carry worry. I can't carry anxiety. I can't carry weight. So I hand over my weight, my worries to him, and I walk in peace. Praise the Lord. Jesus is my peace. He's my burden lifter, my burden carrier. He is our peace. He's broken down every wall, but we must cast our cares on him. Praise the Lord. And it says, to do this, you must always be alert and never give up. Don't ever give up. Always be on alert and never give up. 
with all perseverance, always pray for all God's people and the saints. Don't just pray for yourself, pray for everybody. Pray for the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So the devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. See, this thing is so deep. That's why I'm saying to you, I can't finish it in one go. You know, in Matthew 12, 26, Jesus was, he cast out demons, okay? He was casting out demons out of people. And the Pharisees heard about it and they accused him. And they said, oh, this man is using the power of Beelzebub, which is another name for the enemy, another name for Satan, right? And so Jesus, knowing their hearts, he spoke to them. He said, a kingdom that is divided against itself will be destroyed, cannot stand. They will be at war with each other. So if Satan cast out Satan, that kingdom cannot continue. So he said to the Pharisees, you're saying that I'm using the power of Beelzebub to drive, to cast out demons. If that is true, then what power do your people use to force out demons? You see, demons are to be forced out, they're to be cast out. Listen, write that word in capital letters, force out. Force that demon that is troubling you, force them out, cast them out, force them. God held them out, he forced them out. He says, but if I use the power of God's spirit to force demons out, to cast demons out, then the kingdom of God has arrived, has come to you. The kingdom of God has overtaken you. And then he gave an example. He said, if anyone wants to enter a strong man's house, remember, a strong person's house, and steal his belongings, if you want to come into somebody's house, a strong man's house, and, 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 and steal his belongings, you must first bind that strong person. You must first bind that person before you can steal their goods. And Satan is that strong man that Jesus is talking about. If you're going to claim back what is stolen from you, some of you, he's stolen your peace. You need to claim back your peace. Some of you, he's stolen your belongings. He's stolen your money. You need to claim back your marriage. Claim back your finances. Claim back your children. Claim back your home. Claim back. Claim back. Take it back. You must first bind that strong man. And Satan is that strong man. Then you can take your possessions. And so Jesus came to bind that strong man. And he, he, then, he then freed the people. So we are walking in freedom because Jesus came to bind the works of the enemy. And we are now free. You take authority and bind those spirits operating in your home, in your situation, in your finances, in your job, in, in your marriage, anywhere, whatever it is. Take authority. And so... What do these demons do? What, what have they come to do? Let's identify some of them, some of them. I don't know everything, but some of them. One of them is pride. It's the spirit of pride. One of those demons is the spirit. They're very proud. They're arrogant. They're boastful. You know, they're self-conceited. They're all about self. It's all about them. That's a spirit of, it's a spirit of revenge, you know, arrogance, pride, rebellion, it's pride. You know, when we say somebody's got an ego, ego is pride. <laughs> ego is pride. When somebody's hungry for power, that is pride. You want everybody to see you, to know you, I'm the best preacher in town. That's pride. My church is the biggest. That is pride. I'm the best speaker in time. That is pride. Criticism is pride. Anger is pride. When you're always angry, what is the problem? See, you have to cast those demons out. When people are cruel, they're proud. When a pastor allows the saints to worship him, he's proud. That's pride. Yeah, you must not worship any pastor, please. I'm begging you. God will be upset with you because he doesn't like idolatry. 
It's not acceptable. Jealousy is pride. Oh, I can do better than that person. That's jealousy, pride, you know? So what does the Bible say about pride? And we're identifying demons now. These are some of the character, okay? So pride is a demon right there, okay? We need to cast it out, the spirit of pride. Pride leads to destruction, Proverbs 16, 18. Pride leads to destruction. Pride comes before a disaster. That's what the Bible is saying. If you're proud, you're looking to fall. Pride comes before, what do we always say? A fall. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, a proud attitude brings ruin. That means pride comes before a fall. We have to be humble. Verse 19 says, it is better to be humble and be with those who suffer, meaning be with those who are needy, okay? Than to share stolen property with the proud let me give let me let me read it the way the message reads it it says first pride then the crash i love it first pride then the crash the bigger the ego the harder the fall <laughs> right that's what this spirit operates under they want to bring you down so they will make you feel proud you need to cast it out it's better to live humbly among the poor than to live it up among the rich and famous some people are identified. They cannot make friends with people who don't have anything. They have to make friends with people who have something. The spirit of pride. Oh, you know, I'm carrying this designer bag. That bag will not even be buried with us. That bag will rot away just as our flesh rots away in that grave. There's no need to. What are we proud about? If I go to Primark, what is the big deal? And you go to Harrods, so buy what you can afford. I don't have to be like anybody. Buy the car you can afford. I know what a jalopy is like. Oh, wow. Man, my, my husband, we used to push the car. It would just break down somewhere, but that's good. It was humbling. It's good to be humble. And now I drive with pleasure, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. If I didn't know what it was like to push a car, maybe I won't be saying thank you now. Some of us need to be put somewhere else where you see people suffering to appreciate where you are now. Let us not be proud. Let us be humble. Another spirit is a spirit that entices. That is a demon enticing you to do the wrong thing nearing you just like with eve another spirit is the spirit of harassment i told you i said the, satan has come to harass you the spirit of has, harassment you know when somebody says oh i'm being harassed at work take charge and cast that demon out right there bind that demon that is harassing you and bullying you that is a demon they torture you through fear that is a demon we're identifying their traits and their character right there okay they entice, they harass, they torture through fear. And how do they torture you through fear? The fear invades your life. It just comes, you know, you're afraid of circumstances. You're afraid of driving. You are you are, you are paranoid. Uh, we're, we're, we have the fear of isolation. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be. Why are you afraid? There's no need to fear. Perfect love cast out fear. Fear of failure. Fear, fear, fear of losing your job. Don't be afraid of anything. God is in charge here. You know, fear of getting ill. Oh, maybe I'm going to feel ill now. Oh, maybe when I go to sleep, I'll have bad nightmares. Oh, this is fear. Fear is causing people and demons to be rejoicing over the children of God. May the enemy not rejoice over you in the name of Jesus. May the enemy not rejoice over you in Jesus' name. May you be delivered right now from fear in the mighty name of Jesus. We break the yoke of fear over our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Unnatural fear invading our lives. Let me give you some scripture. Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God did not give us the spirit of fear. Fear is timidity. I remember when I used to say, Lord, I'm shy. I don't want to be in the faces of people. I don't want to speak. I don't want to, I don't want to be at the forefront. The Lord says, I'm not shy. And I've chosen your vessel to use us for my glory. So I'm not shy. I said, well, but Lord, I'm shy. I said, there's no timidity in God. There's no shyness here. We don't have shyness in heaven. We're bold as lions. He said, so go back and confess that word in the scripture. Lade is as bold as a lion. That's when I started confessing it. Lade is as bold as a lion. I'm as bold as a lion. I'm as bold. I said it, said it until I became bold. Praise the Lord. God did not give us the spirit of fear, of cringing, 
of afraid, but he has given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, a calm, well-balanced mind, sound mind, a well-balanced mind, a mind of discipline, a mind of self-control. Don't lose control over situations that you can't even control in the first place. Don't let it get to you. Morning tonight, we'll talk about the same topic 40 times. Enough is enough. Tell the devil, get the hands from me. You're not going to occupy my whole day with your presence. I rebuke you. I praise the Lord right now in Jesus' mighty name. God has not given us the spirit that makes us afraid. Praise the Lord. Amen. They compel you. Demons compel you. They force you to do things you don't want to do. That's why mothers must protect young girls. Because the enemy will force them at university to do things they don't want to do. When they're not at home, the enemy tries to grab a hold of your son, your daughter. So we have to pray over them that the enemy will not. That's a prayer point. Lord, let not the enemy compel my children into doing things, into walking into sin, into doing things that are bad. In Jesus' mighty name, the Bible says uh, a thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. They urge you to do something bad. So you surrender. They compel you to surrender. Don't surrender. Don't surrender to lies. Don't surrender to, to the works in your office. Don't surrender. Don't surrender. Take charge. Take charge in Jesus' name. The other one is the cause death. Demons cause death. There's a spirit called the spirit of death. They can cause premature death. They can cause which premature death is sudden death. They can cause suicide. Death comes in many different avenues. All right. So they, they can bring constant thoughts of suicide. That's the spirit of death. And you need to know, identify that spirit and take charge, take authority and cast that spirit out. Spirit of death. You are afraid. You need to cast that out. That is the spirit behind murder. That is the spirit behind epilepsy. Epilepsy is in the Bible. Because any spirit that causes you to die. Epilepsy killed somebody that I know. Very precious. Thank God he saved. Fell out of the bed. Nobody was at home. He passed away. Very sad. But that was an epileptic fit. So we bind that spirit of epilepsy. We bind epileptic fits in Jesus' mighty name. Self-mutilation. Cutting. Self-harming. Abortion. It's the spirit of death. These are things that are working in our society. You know, mourning, abnormal grief, abnormal mourning. The Bible says we should not mourn as the sinners do. Because you mourn to a point where you have no more life. Until you feel like, let me even just die. Sorrow. And the Bible says in John 10, 10, a thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life. And have it in all its fullness. John 10, 10. You will have life more abundantly. You will have life to the full until it overflows. Praise God. Amen. They enslave. Demons enslave. There's a demon of slavery. Every black person in this world whose generations have been held in slavery, you need to break that yoke of slavery in Jesus' mighty name. When I first came to the United Kingdom, although I was born here, I grew up in Nigeria. All the jobs that were available when I graduated were cleaning jobs. You see black people there, cleaning toilets, cleaning here, cleaning the tubes, this, that. Only a few people had good jobs. And I used to think, gosh, is this a lot of meat? Is this how I'm going to end up? But when I came to Christ, things changed. You know, I had to change my name to get a job. Because when I gave them my African name, they'll just write you a letter, oh, you know, it's been put in our files. The yoke of slavery was still working. Well, you're not entitled to much. But it was broken. Please, my sisters and my brothers, I love you. Don't feel bad about anything. It's the devil at work. It's not you. It's the devil at work. This is what he does. He divides. He causes strife. Do you know I have a white sister right now? I've got sisters that are beautiful. English, German. One speaks English and Spanish. One is quintessential English. We have got sisters all over the world in different colors. I'm telling you, we're beautiful, but the devil wants to divide us through his evil spirits and we rebuke them and cast them out in Jesus' name. Jesus' mighty name. They cause addictions. They cause addictions. People don't realize that their habit is an addiction. It's a demon that needs to be cast out. If you're addicted to something, 
The Bible says for all those that are led by the Spirit of God, Romans 8, 15, are the children and the sons of God. If you are led by the Spirit, you are a child of God. And the Bible says that the Spirit you receive does not make you slaves again to fear. We're no longer yoked. We're no longer into slavery. We are free in the mighty name of Jesus. So God is saying you did not receive the spirit of slavery leading to fear. You have been set free. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. We can now cry to God, Abba, Father. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're no longer in that yoke of Gentiles. We are believers now. Amen. We're no longer in bondage. But these spirits can put us in bondage. They can cause addictions in our lives. In what way? What way do they cause addiction? Through alcohol. Alcoholic, uh, alcoholic addiction. You will notice that when a man or a woman is addicted, they can do anything. Anything is possible. They can fight. They can kill. They can do anything. A girl will sleep with a man that she's never met before when she's drunk. Will walk in a place dark in the night, in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. in the bush when they're drunk. Demons possess people when they are drunk. It's demonic possession. They will lose their mind and the mind is captivated by that demon of alcoholism and they begin to misbehave. They can be violent. They can be abusive. They can be narcissistic. They can be anything because they're already possessed by the devil. And that's why it's not good to be addicted to anything at all. Addiction to drugs, addiction to smoking, addiction to gambling, even addiction to playing video games. People have gone out and killed because they are addicted to video games and they practice it in reality. Addictions, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. Some people are addicted to what they eat. It's bondage. You need to break it in Jesus' name. Eat it when you're not hungry. Break it, break it, break it, break it. Some people are addicted to their TV. I have to watch TV 24-7. And they'll say, oh, I'm watching the things of God. Come on, get your Bible out. Don't cop out of it. That's the devil telling you, look, you know, you are watching TV for the Lord. No, no, don't excuse it. That's another voice. I'm telling you, it's a voice of deception. You have to cast it out. Some people are addicted to mobile phone, iPhone. I'm on the phone 24-7, Android. Hi, we can speak for three hours. And then after that, we can't pray for an hour. <laughs> you see how the devil is a fool. I'm telling you. So all of us are guilty. Look, nobody is exempt from anything. Some people are addicted to, you know, money. Everything is about money. Some people are stingy. They're afraid of losing their money. It's fear. Everything is about money. I've got this, I've got that, you know, addicted to money. Some people are addicted to work. Addiction is not only smoking and drinking, it's everything. It comes in every facet. And we have to watch and pray. Then, I will have to go quickly because I want to finish before I want to hear your voices. So, yeah. So uh, another way to identify a demon is that they defile. They defile through the spirit of lust. We need to pray for our children. God spoke to the children of Israel and Judah when he wanted to judge them in Hosea 5.4. Hosea 5.4 says, they do not direct their deeds toward turning to their God, for the spirit of harlotry is in their midst. The spirit of harlotry is a spirit of prostitution, is a spirit of loss, and they do not know the Lord, the Bible says. So it says, you've, you've done many evil things. And the deeds that they're doing, prostitution, uh, pornography, Sleeping around, defiling yourself will not allow you to return to God. Guilt will come in. You'll feel guilty, you'll stop it, and then you'll go back again. We need deliverance. We need to ask the Lord, help me, deliver me. Deliver me from the spirit of lust. Deliver me from the spirit of prostitution. You think a prostitute is the only one talk, walking on the streets? There are girls that are prostituting. Sleeping around, sleeping all over the university, everywhere, and nobody will know their parents won't know. And the Bible says that Israel has made itself unclean. We become unclean. It's an unclean spirit. We defile ourselves. That is a spirit that defiles. It's an evil force behind pornography. It's the evil force behind adultery. That spirit that defiles is the evil force that brings all those sexual dreams. Spirit husband, spirit wife masturbation, all those things. 
We need to break it. We need to let it go. Don't feel guilty. Just ask God for help. Everybody is guilty of one thing or the other. All right? These demons, they deceive. So when you see deception, take authority. That is the spirit of Python. Okay? They deceive. Wow. Honestly, I'm going to I'm going to have to stop very soon because it's deep. It's wide. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I will just stop at just identifying them. All right? So you can know. When you see situations uh, manifesting in your home, you will know that, oh, this is deception. I, I rebuke this spirit. I bind it. I cast it out. You will recognize. I say, oh, this is the spirit of lust. I rebuke it. I cast it out. All right. Okay. So the other identity of this spirit is the spirit of deception. That is the spirit of Python. Acts chapter 16, 16. When the disciples were on, on their way to prayer, they were met by a slave girl. Remember the story of the slave girl that was possessed by spirits of divination. The, for, 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 uh, fortune telling. Telling the future events. All right, and she was bringing her owner's money. That is the spirit of Python. That is the spirit of divination, the spirit of deception. It's a Python spirit. All right. They have the ability to predict the future. So all those prophecy, prophet, prophet, prophesy, prophet, all over the YouTube. Be careful who you listen to. Not all prophecies from God. Some of them are from Python spirits. Some of them are from Python spirits. They deceive. This girl was deceiving people. She was under demonic influence. The people who are claiming to be men of God and they're under demonic influence. Women of God working through Python spirits. They operate through the occult, but you will not know because they've disguised it as religion, as you know, church programs, as conferences. These are spirits of the new age. The spirits of secret societies, Freemasonry, Python spirits, all these things, occult, fortune telling, white magic. I used to be deceived once. I thought white magic was very good. Not knowing I was in the world. I didn't know it was so bad. White magic, black magic, hypnosis. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Don't be hypnotized because you're losing your spirit right there. The spirit will just come in there and possess you. Hypnosis, numerology, all these are spirits of Python. All those, you go to gypsies and go and read your palm. It's Python spirits, Ouija boards, wearing charms, you know, all those dream catchers. I used to, I was nearly deceived with that dream catcher because I didn't know what it was. I just thought they said this can catch a dream. Ah, okay, I wasn't a Christian. I looked at it. I didn't buy it. You know, I just went on. But I was fascinated for a moment. These are deceptive spirits. Watch out around your house. What charms have you got that you don't know is a charm? Have you got dream catchers? Get rid of it. Burn it right now. Believing in horoscopes. That's a spirit of Python, deceptive spirit. Zodiac signs. All those acupuncture. I'm sorry to say that. Yeah. Deceitful. So this is it. Let's call it what it is. You may not like me for telling the truth, but uh, I want to go to heaven. All right. Then these spirits also, they attack the body. So we call it the spirit of infirmity. All right. Spirit of infirmity attacks your body, your knee. Uh, some people say, I've got arthritis. They've got cancer. They've got this. They've got that. And I'm not taking it lightly. I have sympathy and I love everybody and I pray for them. I pray for the sick. So don't think I'm making a joke of it. All right. So let me quickly go to Luke 13, 10 to 13. Luke 13, 10 to 13. Wow, my time is fast. Spent. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And a woman was there for 18 years. She had an evil spirit. Take a note of that. She had an evil spirit in her that made her crippled. It made her disabled. The Bible calls it she had an evil spirit. She is not the evil, but she had a spirit in her that was causing infirmity in her body. It made her cripple. Her back was always bent. She could not stand up straight. I want you to imagine that her back was always bent. She couldn't stand up straight. This is what this evil spirit caused her to suffer. And when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are free. You are released. You are set free. Christ has come to set us free. He said, you are released from your sickness. Your disability is gone. 
You need to speak that into yourself. I'm released from this disability. My sickness is gone. I am free in the name of Jesus. You speak it over your grandchild, your child, whoever is sick in your home. Lay your hands upon them and they will recover in Jesus' name. And the Bible says in verse 13 of Luke 13, says Jesus put, he put his hands on her. He laid hands on her. And immediately she was able to stand up straight and began praising and giving glory to God. You see, that is powerful. That is powerful right there. We can take charge. We can action the word of God over our families, over our lives. Have you been on medication forever? Come on, use the word of God to get away from it. The doctors are good, but don't be on it for life. Don't be bound. Don't be yoked by infirmity. Make, take active steps speaking the word. Praise the Lord. The Bible says immediately she was able to stand upright. Immediately, praise the Lord. It had an immediate, the word of God has immediate effect on us. So she went from crippled to standing up straight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May that be a portion in Jesus' name. We will be standing up straight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Because some people are crippled in the spirit. It's not physical. It could be spiritual. Where people are crippled, they're not standing up straight. They're not aligned in the word of God because the devil has bent them. The devil is, is possessed them. So they're not straightened. But once they're free, once they're free by the power and the word of God, who is Jesus, they'll be walking straight in the word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let me quickly tell you, the spirit of infirmity is behind diabetes, arthritis, cancer, all the, uh, any infections, nerve disorders, kidney infection, allergies, constant tiredness, all of these things. I know some things you say are natural. Doctors, don't crucify me. I'm reading the word of God. I'm reading the word of God. And the doctor is subject to the word. Don't forget that. Whatever you've learned is subject to the word, okay? So whoever you are, you're subject to the word of God. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. All right? So this woman was like a hunchback. Some people have organ failure. That's infirmity. We take authority because we've got dominion over the devil and his kingdom. God gave us dominion. We've got to live dominion life, freedom. You must always check your body, check your life, and say, Father, this ache has been paining me here for a while. I lay my hands on it, and I decree freedom right now. Be free. I curse every pain by the root. I command your body, be free in Jesus' name. You'll be walking free, I'm telling you. Look at my God looking so pretty. What do you think? That's the word of God working right there. Huh. I'm telling you, some of us are 40. We're not even halfway anywhere. You know, we need to live in the word, drink the word, speak the word, walk the word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Don't lose your dominion dominate dominate and don't be dominated dominate and don't be dominated in jesus name and through the grace of our lord jesus christ we'll be free from all of these powers of darkness in jesus name amen i will leave it here because there's a lot to 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 unravel all right so i want you to know that the devil is already defeated and it's up to us to enforce that defeat enforce the defeat of the devil by taking authority over him and every work that he does in jesus name amen god bless you for listening to me i know it's quite deep it's a lot that i've poured in there thank you for for listening and not falling asleep on me god bless you if you're online and you'd like to receive jesus christ as your personal lord and savior to be free from demonic afflictions please will you pray after me lord jesus i come before you today to give my heart to you i repent of all my sins and i ask you to please forgive me Whatever has brought sickness into my life, depression, mental health disorders, all those demons, I reject them by your name, Jesus. I reject them in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that as you are receiving Jesus into your heart right now, he's setting you free from afflictions in your body. I command sicknesses to go. Afflictions, lose that person that is confessing Jesus right now in Jesus' name. Let us continue in that prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for setting me free. And from today, I declare you as my personal Lord and Savior. I ask you to teach me your ways. Teach me your word and let your Holy Spirit come into my life. I thank you from today. I will serve you all the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. It's as simple as that. The Lord loves you, all right? Jesus loves you. 
And please, if you'd like to contact us, our email address is churchofneardestiny at gmail.com. Churchofneardestiny at gmail.com. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for listening.